So this is our data table. We can see that this is one of the things that we're going to be provided with in terms of our um, data sheets. So you can see this is relating to carbon-13 nuclear magnetic resonance. And, you can, and as you look down, you see slightly different values or different ranges of values. Now, the one problem that we have is this degree of overlap. And just as we've had to worry about nomenclature uh, and how it's affected by ambiguity, so ambiguity is now going to creep into some of our analysis of spectra. And the reason for that is because some of these values are a little bit uh, or are contained within different ranges. If, for example, I was to look at this first peak uh, on my um, spectra, I would notice that it's occurring a little bit under the 20 mark. And so that would suggest to me that I have a um, maybe uh, seven, uh, 19, 18 that I'm looking at. So if I'm looking at a value, let's call it 19, uh, it fits in here, it fits in here. No, it's kind of close here, maybe not, and then nowhere else. So is it a carbon-hydrogen bond or is there a halogen attached to it? Well, because I know this is ethanol, I know that it's the uh, carbon-hydrogen bond. Uh, what's what's difficult is if I didn't know. If I didn't know, then I'd have to do some other things in order to try and see if I could uh, eliminate the halogen or confirm the presence of one or more halogens. So, um, so this is one of the little problems that we have when we're trying to read the, sp the spectra for NMR, is that sometimes these peaks are occurring at, um, at places where there can be more than one solution. You can see there's another one that's occurring up here around the 59 mark. So we'll call that one 59 and we'll call that one 19. And at the 59 mark, well, yeah, no, this one possibly, uh, this one. Uh, and then we're all right after that. So again, we've got two options that we can look at for the peaks that have occurred here. So um, Again, what we know is that we're looking at ethanol, so we are looking at this uh, hydroxyl functional group right here. And so therefore we know that it's actually this one and this one that we're looking at. There's no halogen and uh, there's no amine group on the end either. Now that's fine when we know what it is and we know what we're, we're expected to get, but what if we don't? What if I just gave you this uh, output data without telling you that it was the spectra of ethanol. Could you confirm that it was ethanol? Well, as you've just seen, that you can't directly. But there are other pieces of information that we might be able to get to help us out. What we have here uh, in general are two peaks. Now, two peaks tells us that there's at least two carbons. It's possible that if the molecule is symmetrical and therefore the types of environments that we find for the carbons are similar, that is, say, for another, if, if we extended this molecule on and, say, had our OH group in the central carbon and formed another one beyond, it may well be that that symmetry creates the same number of peaks because we've still only got two different types of carbon environments. And this is one of the things that's important when you look at it. The simplest thing to do is to see two peaks and say, well, it's got two carbons. It's a good starting point, but you'll still need other things to see if you can confirm um, what you think is the case. One extra piece of information that we can use to help us to try and identify what's going on here is to also look at the proton NMR or the hydrogen one NMR for ethanol. And we can see that on the next slide. So here is the... Uh, proton NMR for ethanol. You can see what's happening here is we have um, three different environments for the hydrogen. So this time what we have is these three different hydrogen environments. And as a result of that, this is starting to give us a little bit more information, particularly around our, our potential symmetries of different molecules that we can identify for ethanol. And you'll You'll remember that this time we're actually working from something that we know. We already know that we're looking at ethanol. And we can see that the three different environments are a hydrogen that is attached to an oxygen, a hydrogen that is attached to a carbon, which is also attached to one other hydrogen, 
and a hydrogen that's attached to a carbon that has two other hydrogens. So effectively we have a CH3 group, a CH2 group and an OH group. Part of what we want to try and do with these is to have a look at where they are, where each of these um, groups is and how the output data helps us to identify that. When we do that, we look at, we're looking for the high resolution peaks. The high resolution peaks so show splitting into smaller clusters and this is based on the N plus one or neighbors plus one rule. So you can actually see that in these types of environments, we're going to have neighbors that are going to identify each of these three groups. So if we talk about the neighbor of the CH3 group, the neighbor of the CH3 group is the CH2. So it's a carbon that contains two hydrogens. If we add one, two plus one is three. So for this particular species here, we have a neighbor that has one, two, three of these little cluster peaks and therefore must be three minus one, which is two hydrogens. So this is an environment, this is a neighbor that has two hydrogens. If we look specifically at our CH2 group, then what we notice is that our CH2 group has an oxygen attached and a carbon with three hydrogens. So there are three uh, hydrogens attached here and therefore with our N plus one rule, three plus one is four, then we have in this region here, four of these little peaks. We actually have four um, of these little clusters, which indicate to us that this particular species is located next to a CH3. Now, the problem that we have is that the information that we're getting is, we're, is the information we're getting about neighbors, not about the actual um, carbon itself. So we've got to put all of this data together to get a sense of exactly what's going on here. This OH, um, this OH hydrogen over here is a normal position for a hydroxyl functional group. Um, and it is something that, that will appear occasionally in some of these outputs. And usually you'll be able to identify it straight away as an OH um, functional group. When we put this information together with the outputs that we got from our carbon 13 NMR, we're starting to get a bit of an idea of the different types and numbers of carbon and hydrogen environments that we have. And so we can start to make some more um, direct conclusions about exactly what types of molecules that we have.